Okay, what I have here is a uh, five, five and a half volt solar panel, USB cable with the power leads connected into this exciter circuit here. And uh, I've got to add a second transistor to turn off the circuit and just allow charging of the batteries when there's light shining on the panel. And uh, when the uh, ambient light decreases to uh, complete darkness, then the uh, transistor will turn off and then allow the exciter part of the circuit to work. And here's the circuit board here. And this is the one that keeps it switched off when there's light shining on the um, on the on the on the solar panel. And uh, you can see this. I've got some rechargeable batteries. There's four of them, which charge for about uh, five five and a half volts um, with that panel during daylight, and uh, they charge pretty fast in regular sunlight. And then what I have here is a uh, just a water bottle that's been here it is it's sitting in here. And I put it in this drinking bottle which I've cut in half. I've wrapped three turns of um, this is 18 AWGY around it for the primary. And the secondary is probably about 400 turns of 30 AWGY wrapped around this water bottle. This is actually what's called a smart water bottle which is a smart water. I don't know if it really makes it smart, but anyway, that's wrapped around there. And these cores are wrapped in opposite directions. Um, this technology is all based on that of uh, Dr. Stedfler and G. Bluer and uh, other people in the field of uh, high frequency transmission of energy. And uh, none of this is really my own creation. This is just uh, a simple adaptation. And what we're going to do is check it out to see if it works. So what I've done here is I've turned the switch on so there's actually, in theory, if, if there was no light shining on that panel, this would be on. And uh, it would probably give me as well as that. Anyway, let's, tr let's try it here. I've got a just a regular uh, fluorescent bulb. I'm going to stick this near this core, and you can see nothing's happening. I wish I had another helping hands here, because then I could show you it coming on as I drop that. So what I'm going to do is drop this, uh, cover the light, the amp it's just room light really that's on this. Cover it over like that, and then bring this near, and you can see that light's up. And it's, it's pretty good range, I mean it's probably around 6 inches or better um, of range on that light. And if I was to take that, uh, to uncover that uh, solar uh, panel, this light would go right off and the batteries would begin been charging. So it functions as a, fer a perfect little um, night light. So let's try that. Um, I can't really show it uh, going off when I take it off, but anyway, let me just uncover it so the light's getting on it and see that it's not, not doing anything. Back on, we get the light coming back like that. We can also try some neon lights, have a little connection, connection of neon, neon bulbs here. We'll try out. This thing's still running right now, so with the bulbs they, uh, they work pretty well. Light up. Probably light the whole lot of them. Get near our... There they go. We'll get some light on that panel. See what's going on. Nothing's happening. So uh, it's kind of like a, almost like a uh, you could uh, you know call it a Slayer Exciter Slayer based on G Blower uh, Slayer Exciter Garden Light, which. If you could get this thing in a waterproof housing, or at least get that circuit um, into a waterproof uh, environment and get that uh, bottle set up that um, it didn't flood with water, like uh, what I would do is cut, cut a hole in the bottom of it and maybe, um, you know, it's been lacquered, 
so that should protect it somewhat. And then just you know make sure that uh, that rain uh, doesn't flood anything. I think it would probably work even with uh, you know with water uh, dropping on top of it from 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 light rain. And I, I do plan to try that. I'm going to try and get this thing encased. You could probably put that thing into a, a box with some O-rings to protect everything. Those transformers, those transistors don't really seem to heat up that much. Anyway, it's, it's been off most of the time, so let me um, turn it on by, by covering it up. Uh, covering it up like that, and I'm going to leave like a bulb uh, sitting there. Here's some insulating tape. We'll put that right there. We'll get this going, and we'll leave it there for a little bit. And, uh, whoops, fall down. We'll leave it there to see if there's much heating in in the uh, transistor that drives it, the main driving transistor for the circuit. I'm going to just let it go for a little while. Coming back later now, and I'm going to see if the transistor is warm. And uh, it's just a little warm. It's not hot, which is good.